let's say relevant even to you uh, here in West Africa. So, um, so I was given, Abby was gracious enough to give me some few notes and pointers on how to direct the, the show. I'm not a big uh, person of lectures, so uh, she gave me points. I will have read all those points in five minutes and I'll have been done by the, uh, by the time five minutes are, <laughs> are done. But I'll, I'll keep this, uh, I'll try to keep this interesting and engaging as much as I can. Um, and of course, talk about the experiences that I, that I've gone, I've had. And so um, just the other day, we, we were in a church uh, mission with um, LIC uh, that we had at Bono East. And uh, I was given the opportunity to just train some of the people who are there, the, the, uh, who are helping us uh, around in the mission work, uh, the pastors and, and those who have been trained for ministry uh, to, to be able to just reach out to others. So um, the opportunity was to help them out also in their own lives, um, to be able to, to, to now, themselves in terms of their and so as that was happening to them and as them what they thought farming is all about and it was interesting how they live of farming but did not understand how farming can be a business quite strange that they, will, they wouldn't look at it as business but the more i thought about it the more it dawned on me that many of us um, don't look at farming as a serious business they we look at farming as um either something that will you know uh, give us the money so that i can be able to survive um in terms of a subsistence or I, I, I do farming as a side hustle, which gives me a bit of money just to push me along. But if I was look to look at the real definition of what a business is, I, I see as if it goes more deeper than just how me, most people look at it. And today I'm going to look at farming. I'm going to divide farming into um into uh how do i put them uh, there, there are two types in terms of the types of farming that i believe we have so first of all i believe that all of us understand what farming is and um, but just for a recap that what farming is basically is about putting the uh, putting like seeds uh, for example just putting a seed uh, nurturing that seed as it grows to a plant and giving you the desired output, like uh, whether it's the flower, whether it's a seed, whether it's the leaves that you need from, from that crop. And so that is basically farming. And um, I know that if I was to, if you are to go and Google types of farm, uh, the types of farming that are there within the world, you'll be given so many things, so many definitions, but I want to give you just two of them. And that's livelihood or subsistent farming, and there's business farming. Now, um, of course, livelihood farming is based on meeting the immediate, immediate needs, that is food, school fees, utilities, uh, family needs, etc. It's a way of just more or less yeah, you're meeting your needs and for others, even just for survival. And it's essentially we are doing farming to run our day to day lives. And that's what mostly livelihood or what you call subsistence farming is all about. Uh, and most of this, yes, you are still getting an income, but it is that you're looking at that income as a means of doing. Um, like for example, if I'm to put plant beans or maize, and I'm biased on those two crops because right now uh, in, the, in in my farm, that's what I have. 
So if I'm to put uh, uh, maize and beans in there, I expect it to get some money. And that money, if I was to get it, I'm supposed to pay school fees or I'm supposed to um, buy, buy, buy clothes for the kids or or you know take them out but you, um but there is that point of when the money comes that's the planning of it and and i and i decide okay the, let, let me set aside a bit uh, just to plow back into the farm however when it comes to business farming the thought is slightly different because the first thing that you're looking at the farm as is a business the money i get from the amazing farm is not looked at, oh, I can do, I can now pay school fees. No, it is a business that decides how much it is to pay me so that <laughs> the first priority goes towards the business. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry. The money goes, <laughs> no worries. Um, the money goes and it is a business that decides, okay, for your effort, that amount, then you can decide, I need to pay school fees. Really a big difference because that is, um, uh, to use the resources that we gave an existence, then you will most often than not plow back the most, uh, how do I call it, the most, uh, the minimum necessary for you to do the farming. But as a business, you're looking at it on how is it going to grow? Um, this is the profit that I've gotten, or these are the losses. So what, what are the changes? How are all these um, uh, the leaves and branches of the whole business and thinking attain a certain vision farming livelihood is secondary money uh, the money in the business farming money revolves around the business and both in its sustainability and growth mm. those two things are becoming priority um in terms of your livelihood that comes uh, in terms of like a salary i mean if you think of every other business big corporations and all that's how how they do it they you have a business this is my pay but the business is what sometimes even determines your pay if, if wow. the business has done well then my pay is like even a percentage of 15 percent then that's what i will get but the rest the, the priority always goes back to the business. So those are my definition. And of course, as I said, if you go to Google, you'll be told about regenerative farming, organic farming, and all those things. And um, trying to decide what, what kind of farming it is. So uh, for Abby now to ask me to, to ask you uh, to, to help you get what's the right way is a bit of like, all right, how do I even start? Because this feels like um, 10,000 roads that leads, and this becomes a very personal thing. But there are a few things that <laughs> there are a few things that I would like to um, I would like to bring out when it comes to what farming really is, and I'd like to ask, and you can just do by a raise of hands in 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 the just show me just a reaction by doing a reaction. How many are actually farming in this group? Uh, I, I don't know if we are many or we are few, but I would like to see just a, in a raise of hand how many of us uh, are in are are farming. Wow! Is there okay. anyone farming? 
No, I hands. hope I'm not talking. Or am I talking? To, maybe I'm talking too fast. Oh, I no. slow down? It's fine. Oh, okay. So you maybe get me. Maybe they are now considering oh. going into farming. Okay. 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 So um, for those, so I mean, that's that's an interesting place to be because. Okay. So at, Melody at least I said, think I, yeah. I think, yeah. She's considering so, going into farming. Oh, Comfort so we are most of us. Aha, uh, uh -huh. All right. Um, just hold on. Just give me a, a few minutes. Okay. So Melody said you've tried, but not consistent. While we're waiting for Francis, are you willing to share? Maybe you can still type. What kind of farming are you doing? Is it crop, animal, and what kind of crop? Hi. Hi. Good evening. Okay, so I have um, considered some, um, I've actually farmed before because when I was in SS, we had um, assigned works and I was a garden girl. So I think okay. that's an added interest in farming. And okay. I was doing it for just like sustenance, just the house, mm. but not on a large scale. Also okay. because we are in Ghana. <laughs> anyway. so, but yeah, um, I have planted cuckoo, okay. tomatoes, pepper, mm. um, I that thing that they put in the palm. Sorry, yeah, you're breaking up a bit. Hello. Is it a formal Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, you. It was breaking up a bit. You said what? What thing that's put in what? Um, not there's this oh, green thank you, piece. Thank you, Barry. Oh, okay, it's funny. <laughs> yes, thank you, Barry. Plantain okay. and coconut. Okay, I see. I grew them at the back of my house. Hmm. So it was more for your home. Yeah, but it grew, so I was excited. So I maintained it. Fortunately, okay. to who actually is into farming for her house as well, as well, sorry, but the method she uses, like, just blew me up. Oh. Yeah, lime keeps getting bad every now and then. She doesn't have any soil, but she uses, like, maybe fireworks. Hello. She uses what? She uses a certain method. I don't know whether it's osmosis or whatever, but she okay. uses the the sensor. For the like the dispensing machine, twenty liter mm. one, and she could not pass with water. I take a picture by native, and so it's hard. My problem is farming in my house, of course. My area is clay, mm. so I didn't know how I was going to get black soil and all of that. Mm. But seeing what she was able to do without soil, it was inspiring, and it it has triggered my interest in farming again for just okay. the house. And she grows okay. everything, even okay. farming things. I didn't okay. know there was something like chocolate mint and orange oh, mint wow. and apple mint. I, yeah, it was interesting. So that's my little experience. Okay. Okay. I, I hope that you learn something from here that will help you to go back and do better. Okay. Well, so, uh, Francis. Yes. <laughs> I, I was listening in. Okay. And wow, those are amazing 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 things that uh, your friend is doing i i didn't get what she was doing with osmosis at the moment yeah the line was a bit bad at a point oh, okay 
um melody uh, could you could you just clarify on that melody are you there oh it looks oh, like she's, she's gone off okay yeah all right yeah, I think she, she mentioned that the person was using the dispenser bottles for the, uh -huh. the process. Um, I, I don't know what other connection they, they did. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, so let me just kind of try and also, I mean, it's, 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 it's amazing that um each of us i believe has a story to tell like like what just melody has said and mm -hmm. uh, we may know um uh, somebody who's done farming and is very successful and uh, and he's doing some amazing things and with very innovative ways uh even without even soil which is which i which i always say is, is something that i is quite bold for uh, even for me um okay. this is uh, coming from a person who's our, our our heritage is more or less like the soil that we have mm -hmm. and it's and so one thing i would love to encourage you guys is that farming is fun mm. okay farming is also scary <laughs> <laughs> Farming um, brings you closer to God. <laughs> mm, definitely. But in the end, farming is very fulfilling. Mm. And when and this is has been from my experience as a farmer. Uh, I've been uh, the first time I think I, I was able to do production in a large scale. Well, I would say large scale, but to others. It was very specific, and I was be able to do uh, pumpkins in two and a half acres. And okay. and the beginning and the beginning of uh, the planting season, the rains were there. The pumpkins were growing so well; they flowered well. The rains were still there. I mean, it was within the rainy season, and the fruit started uh, coming out and then the rains disappeared so mm. for those who know about pumpkins this is not something you want to have the rains disappearing on when it's starting to fruit that's a that's that's not a good no go zone and we tried uh irrigation and all and it, uh, well to me i was i felt disappointed until we harvested and put it in a truck and we, and we realized we had four to, four tons of pumpkin pumpkins at the back of the truck and they're like okay that's that's interesting <laughs> and this was for my first time and it, it it felt like wow i got that and i thought it and i thought all the things that could go wrong went wrong hmm. and it was a scary thing but wow it, it it just came out um, um quite fulfilling in the end mm -hmm. and when we look when i look at farming in terms of what it can be what what um how it can do i mean first of all we know that it's the one industry that i don't think the ai can be able to take up until we are fully mechanized and we are still even in the western countries they're not yet there and so people need to eat, so uh, farmers are needed. But farming is not about food. Farming is way beyond food nowadays. We, we have cosmetics. The, the cosmetic industry is looking at the farms mm -hmm. to produce what they need. Um, we have actually the industries, uh, things like starch that still come from cassava and yams. All that comes from the ground. All that comes from farmers yeah and the and the beauty about it is that whatever you decide to do there is a certain niche for it within the world 
And this is one thing that when it comes to choosing on what I would like to do, how I would like to do, there are three main things that I look at. And that is one, your resources that you have. Um, two, the market. And three, of course, yeah, the, in terms of the ecological background of where you have. Yeah. Now, this is the ecological background is, of course, based on the farm itself. Now, um, I'd like to just give an example. Um, in Kenya, we, we love our maize. And uh, just like you guys love your banku. Um, <laughs> but our maize, we use it for our, our foods that we call ugali. Yeah. If there is a shortage of maize in Kenya, people say that Kenya is food insecure. It is not true because there are so many other foods, but if we are missing Ugali, then the country is food insecure. <laughs> it is so serious to the point that people will rather plant maize in a kitchen garden, which looks very ridiculous, by the way, but <laughs> they will rather plant maize and have maize and call it food security. That's how much we love our ugali. Yeah. <laughs> but it's uh, but if we are looking at it in a business, which I I I will always um despite it being a it can be a passion that you're doing it, but I want to look at farming as a business. Um if you're looking at it as a business, then um the statistics the statistics show that. Uh, for in Kenya, for you to be profitable uh, in farming maize, you need at least two and a half acres. So me who has less than two and a half acres, do not have, I don't have the business of planting maize. Now, okay. the, the interesting thing that, and I know some of you can think of it like, but, but if I, I've done one acre of, of maize and in the end of it, I still got a profit. But we forget that farming there is, especially when it comes to crops and even animals, there is a time lag. Yeah. By the time I put my investment and by the time I realize the output. Yeah. So for example, if I was to plant maize and I expect to get the prof, uh, the produce in three to four months. Three to four months, I'm only injecting money, but yeah. time is a cost. And in business, we look at that as a cost. And so, if I was to if I was to put in the op, what we call opportunity cost, and maybe you can refer it to with another crop, then we will find out that. Maybe that that's why uh, that one acre of maize isn't as profit isn't even profit making, and it needs to be around from two and a half acres. So, with that in mind, you realize, okay, what am I going to? Um, how is farming? The, how do I do? How do I you um, do farming in a way that is both profitable, both sustainable? but it also both is fulfilling. Mm. And so, and I look at, and these are the things that when you're looking at, I don't know if anyone has more than 10 acres here or five acres uh, in this group, but looking at what you have is very vital in deciding on how you're going to do your farming. Mm. Uh, Melody has talked to about her friend who does without um, soil. So, yeah. uh, Ashley is looking at where can I get the black soil in order to farm. Uh, her friend is doing with none of that, and she's doing mm -hmm. amazing thing. And I and I believe she's also making a profit. She looked at what she has and how best I can use that that what I have in order to be able to be able to get an output. Uh, and this output is the crops. And this is farming. It's it's both a science. It's both a business. It's both. It's it's life, more or less. I, we, uh, the way people say football life is life, farming is life. And in reality, it is farming is life. And so 
this uh, looking at it is that I'm looking at my resources. So if I have, let's say, a kitchen garden, I would like to do farming. If I have five acres, I would like to get into farming. I would like if I have those two aspects because I have five acres and a kitchen garden. Then the then what I can grow in five acres will be different than what I can grow in a kitchen garden. Mm -hmm. I may I may grow one of the most expensive herbs in a kitchen garden, but if I put it in five acres, it becomes hard to manage. It becomes very expensive when I look at the opportunity cost, and I realize it's more expensive, and I get less profit in a uh, growing a crop that crop in a five acre garden, yet in a kitchen garden, it thrives well, I get the most out of it. All these things, all these factors, yes, they are, they are there. And in order to be able to get what is right, I, I always say, yes, one needs to sit down and research as much as you can. And okay. not only just research, but open your ears, open your eyes, read, uh, see what is happening, not only just within the world, but here in Ghana. M many things, and more often than not, we we run for the next big thing. Um, as I said, I will still use my Kenyan example. So there was a time where, when all the farmers were introduced into rabbit keeping, and it was a big thing. And uh, suddenly the government was there and started shouting all over. So everyone started keeping rabbits. And if you think about it, it's something very easy. You don't need to make it so big. But then all of a sudden, uh, quail, quail eggs farming started coming up. <laughs> and so people discarded <laughs> the quail eggs. And I mean, the, the, the rabbits the rabbit. and shifted to quail eggs. And because of the of all this hype of nutrition, yet no one sat down to to realize if I put quail eggs and feed them like a chicken, then they'll become chickens. And sure. what you give a quail, it will produce for me an egg that is similar to an egg, to a chicken because it doesn't have the nutrition that it gets when it's out in the wild. Yeah. So quail. Uh, <laughs> so. If you're not giving the quail the nutrition that it gets when it's out in the wild, then the egg is just um, a colored egg Ch that is egg. just <laughs> a small, expensive colored egg. It's it's not it's not an egg. I mean, just buy a chicken egg. It gives you more quantity and and more, less expense. So, but those, but there are people who remained in the rabbit farming. Mm. And those people continue to grow their business and them and some of them are among the biggest rabbit farmers in Kenya. Yeah. And they started together with many farmers, but they did not move with the wave. Yeah. So uh, this story where I'm bringing it and this especially when you want to when you want to start um, your farming, what I'll ask is what in any business, whether be it farming, whether it be it, uh, the IT or whichever industry that you are in, in any business, the person, each person has core values that they anchor themselves in. Because we know the business, um, there's one thing we, when we are teaching biz, uh, agribusiness, we do a lot of agribusiness boot camps uh, with the youth. We teach them that the identity of the business and the, and your personal identity are very synonymous. They go hand in hand. So who you are is reflected on even your business. And mm -hmm. this one, and for this context, we're looking at your farm business. And so your values also are reflected on your farm. Mm -hmm. You can do the one crop that absolutely everyone and i mean everyone is doing and yet you can find a way of being successful into it because of i have decided i don't want to do it the same way i want to make sure my prepare is clean i always want mm -hmm. to make sure that it is um it has the right shape or 
you know, it it's this amount of grams. I'm not going to just harvest pepper, throw it in a sack and all like, no, I'm I'm specific. And because of that, a certain um a certain individuals see that and say, oh, I see the quality, I see what you're doing, and I'm and I'm willing to be coming to you because that is your value. My pepper yeah. has to be this this size. My pepper has to look clean by the time I'm out. I clean it up. Those are the values that we carry. And that is you as uh, the person that has to carry up those values into your farm. And so when it comes to farming, your values are, the, are very important. And I've, uh, I, the more we train, yes, we hear people will talk about those cliche uh, values of integrity. And I'm sorry, I'm calling them cliche. They are they are good values. I mean, <laughs> but for this one to like be specific, um, I, I want to see cabbages that are weighty. When I when I harvest my cabbage. I will hold it and it will almost want to, uh, I, I'll get tired holding it. And that's the cabbage I want to be producing. Mm. Uh, I want to do that. that. That is a value that now it is specific to you and it's specific to your business. Mm -hmm. The moment you have such values, then your business will thrive with that. That we, we call it the roots of your business. In simple terms, the foundation of your farming is your okay. values so i okay, i so really before, can't before you, you go on i want to okay see if i right. can take a few um lessons from what you said so far so first of all yeah. before you start you need to do a lot of uh, research into what you are going to farm and then yes. consider um your ecological resource if, if i'm saying it's right yeah yeah. Um, yeah something like the size of your land etc and then but also, also yeah. Yeah. keep in mind that your your values will reflect in your farming yes. even if everybody else is doing the same thing um, mm -hmm. depending on what values you have, you either stand out yeah. or you blend in with everybody else. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, um, just to drive even the point home, um, I know uh, there was a training we did uh, just in Kenya and the past, when we were doing the training, one person said, it was actually veget, just uh, in terms of actually, it was cabbages, cabbages. Mm. And his issue was, I go to the market and I find these really dirty cabbages. And mm. it used to be such a bother to him <laughs> <laughs> that he decided to farm so that he can have clean cabbage. And okay. I'm thinking, it sounds so simple, but it's really that is his value and like yeah. i want to produce and make sure that by that time my cabbages are in the market they're mm -hmm. clean mm -hmm. and you know that in this if if any of us were to go to the cabbage and you see one that is really clean which one will we go for and the one which is versus the one which is dirty already the clean one, of course yes <laughs> something yeah and he's doing something that everyone is doing but because he's there's a value system to it that he's put in, he has he has he's touched a niche that mm. not anyone is doing. Mm. Um, uh, I know Vus, uh, the, the famous Vusi likes talking about the apple got uh, how they've taken up the, the the market. They came to the market and decided, you know, apple needs to be something very friendly. Then they were looking at the user experience. And yeah. the reality is at that time, Android was almost like you needed a computer degree just to, to, to be able to <laughs> navigate your Android phone. Yes, now it's gotten better, but then it was hard. <laughs> and so Apple came up and guys locked into Apple. And so sometimes that simple, uh, just simple idea, that thing that just you're saying, 
yeah, I, wa I want to do it this way. I, I don't like it when things are like this. I, I want to do, I want to do pepe because I want, I like peppers that are this size. I, mm -hmm. I like bringing onions that are dry, very dry, not the ones which you buy and you if you keep them, they start uh, sprouting because they didn't dry up and you're like, yeah. no, I don't want that. So it the, your value system becomes very paramount in who you are and what okay. your business stands for. Yeah. And, and through that, it becomes also the key to what you really want to do with farming. The ecological parts is like, uh, for example, if I'm in a place where it's in the north, it would be hard for me to grow cocoa there. Yeah. If that is the only, I, I, if I'm in the north and I can't grow cocoa, even if I much I wanted to, it will take a lot of research and development for me to grow cocoa there. It's not that it's not impossible, but it might be too costly. And I, I may say you there are some things you can grow much better. Mm -hmm. uh, cashew nuts have been growing quite, have been successful there. Why not think of such such a crop? You know. Mm -hmm. So those are now the ecological. You're looking at your soil. Uh, you're looking at um, the weather conditions mm -hmm. and the crop that you want to do. Can it fit on that? So that was mm -hmm. I just wanted to clarify on the uh, the ecological part. Okay. And so, okay. but your values become very crucial, critical. And then, and then, and the third thing that also, when you're looking into market, uh, into what type of farming or, or what do you want to farm, is the market, of course. Mm -hmm. um, you farming without a market, and when I say market, is not saying, oh, hey, um, we look at the market prices of, uh, let's say. Uh, tomatoes and we say yeah uh, the price of tomatoes are good <laughs> but you have access to that market <laughs> you know it's it's one thing to know that the market price is there it's good there is a market for my tomatoes but do you have access to that market so many people will 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 look at the world market and say wow or the Ghana market and say oh um uh let's say yams um are, are cost uh, they, 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 right now they are quite they are going quite high and they are thinking yes i will make good money with yams but little do you know that there are a lot of middlemen by the time you get you won't be able to get access that market in that price yeah. the only way to sell it that way is if you actually a cartel it becomes also another one of the most uh, an, uh, important thing especially when you're doing it for business mm -hmm. if you're if you do the route of i plant before i get to market then be ready to accept farm gate prices if the people will actually come to your farm gate to to take it up but you and and this is and sometimes that farm get prices can be throwaway prices uh for yeah. such certain crops if there are too many if there's a flood on the market the prices can be really bad and um yeah. so so the research that now I, I know we we said about research is knowing even what the market is knowing the access finding out the access to the market Go and have have a conversation. Uh, even if it is going to the supermarket, I want to do mushrooms. Okay, so I go to the supermarket. I observe, walk around the the supermarket, uh, looking at those who are who who actually pick up the the mushrooms. Have a conversation mm -hmm. with them. Um, try to talk to the person and have a converse uh, with the, the supermarket attendants. How many times do they stock it? Is it mm -hmm. once a week, twice a week? Get a get a feel of what it is. Um, if you can talk to the store manager, is this a product that people want to get? Uh, is it a fast moving? And will you mind me bringing something? What are the requirements? So 
if they, he says outright no that one is a monopoly there's only one person then you know oh then i don't have mm. access to that market then i <laughs> yeah. move to another side <laughs> just take time go walk in and find out can i do this okay so i want to do this where do people buy it where do people sell it? so i walk there and this helps us to understand that what i'm what i'm bringing is 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 going to be valued number yeah. one by the people who are buying it's going to and and because it's valued people will pay for it mm -hmm. and as and when that happens meaning it encourages me to continue planting and farming this thing mm -hmm. but if i go and it stays in the in the shelves or i i try selling and no one buys well i'll just throw it away and i say ah this one um, i'm i'm done with farming let me go back <laughs> looking for my work so yes the farming rates are, so the the market becomes very important um in terms of what you want to start okay now i i know i was talking about we should listen in the years and i realized having conversation even with friends can can guide you um okay talking to people who have businesses and, they, and they'll just tell you, oh, I, I'm in need of a certain essential oil or, uh, and especially here in Ghana, they, um, I noticed the, the cosmetic industry is quite big. So it's, it's something that I know things that are added within, within the cosmetic, uh, in terms of making these cosmetic uh, products are things that actually can be um people are looking for uh the the produce like let's say the accession oils the the inputs that are needed mm -hmm. for the for the products so you can think of that you can look at uh frozen vegetables okay i can do that but what how is the access to that market how how can i access uh shop right or mm -hmm. palace or you know all this melcom to be able to bring my frozen vegetables mm -hmm. all these things you need to 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 consider and i think one of the things that i wanted to to add on to um also as we we're just talking about thinking about how to farm is making your product valuable okay so what what you'd like to farm can you value add it so the um the reason why i'm i'm looking i'm also adding this into it is uh i remember uh, we we have we have done a lot of um in terms of travel around kenya in terms of the businesses we had a project where we were looking at um businesses that were reaching out towards uh small low income people okay. uh, but giving nutritious uh foods i mean it was a good it was good and we looked at all 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 of them in terms of how they are being able to 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 bring in their their products to to no sorry to produce their products in a way that it is affordable to the low income okay. but when we go and visit those who are doing for the high income, we see how much of a margin in terms of profit margins they make versus those who are doing for the lower for a lower income. Now, this is a very biased thing, and sadly, this is the marketing. Our value addition tends to create a, a niche market for you rather than you taking the produce as a, a raw product. Mm. For example, if I was to take peanuts and take it to the, to the market, I will get money, yes. But what if I made peanut butter? Mm. And then not just make it peanut butter and take it, what if I brand it and make it look good? Yeah. What if I, you know, something like that? That in itself creates a, a niche for your product that it was essentially did not have access to a certain kind of product. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing value addition, wh who's your customer? Um, if I'm selling groundnuts, then I say, 
my customer in the market is maybe mostly it's women aged between 25 to 45. Now I'm doing these specific details because I, at least I, I'd like you guys to, when you're thinking of the product, you have this specific one. Mm. So I'll say um, 25 to 45 age, um, these are women who have children, uh, around two to three children. Of, um, they will buy even they normally come to the market at this particular time. Um, so I have my groundnuts and that is who I sell to. But if I make peanut butter, then I I'm I change them, I change the ball game. Um, I start having not only just women, but I'm also having uh, single men who yeah. between age uh, 17 to uh, to 30 who will yeah. buy this and mix it with you know their bread or mm. do something with mm. it you know? yeah. so I'm, i have added an, an extra by just by value addition but okay. also in the previous one when i was just doing raw peanuts i would look at their income and i say oh this one's and between uh, let's say 200 to 1000 cd a month but then when I do peanut butter, I'm doing a thousand to two thousand uh, CDs a month. My the my customers' income has changed again. Mm. So how do they want it? What makes them want to buy my my peanut butter? So mm. value addition creates a, actually does exactly what it says. It adds value to your value. product, and it is very and uh, for many of us who are looking at what would like to do i i think it's it's good that we can get into farming and do all this like um awesome things like pepper cocoa tomatoes all those things but can we go to the next step if i was to mm -hmm. get my my pepper make sure it's clean then i package it in a nice box and uh, clear put a clear wrapper and put my name onto it arrange them well because now people can see that they have the same size yeah they're clean and nice and arranged and i will sell to a different income uh cluster than when i just throw it uh, just take it to the market and mm. by doing that you you realize okay there's also my artistic part of it that gets in yeah. My value, which I wanted my tomato, my my pepper looking like this, I'm able to show it to everyone. Like this is why I'm this is why I'm doing this, and I can package it, and people will see it. Not only just maybe even locally, but even the international. Who mm -hmm. knows? And so we look at all this, uh, and so I will I will look at when when farming. Those are the four things that are like uh, um, I, I will look at. So uh, just a recap. It's, it's mostly in terms of the client, the ecological place where you can grow uh, the market, your value, and mm. can you do value addition? Yeah. I, I would love to do it. And value addition can come later on. Yeah. But it's something I would love. It would be good, even as you think about it, it would be good to have an, like, an idea. This is how it can grow. Mm. Um, we, we had a friend who started pig farming. And they started just pig farming slowly by slowly. Then as she increased her pigs, she decided, you know what, I was going to uh, start a restaurant yeah. in, in the nearby town. Uh, so she started a restaurant and now the restaurant was serving pig meat. And yeah. it reached a point she stopped even because <laughs> she, she thought like, yeah, let me do an like, addition of this. It reached a point she had to stop um her farm work because her restaurant became big <laughs> and she couldn't what she did, did was train other farmers to rare okay. pigs for her wow <laughs> and, that's smart yeah <laughs> so like, and then uh, and, and yeah, she, uh, she's uh, well she's successful mm -hmm. and so it's 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 an interesting thing like think of how i can add value Mm -hmm. A restaurant is adding value to <laughs> what you're doing. Yeah. If, it's, if it's if it's a pig, why not? And mm -hmm. so looking at those four tells you now what you can do. 
Yeah. So I I have a and and I think the last one um something that helps it's uh, we we are calling it a new how do I put it it's a new field of study where people okay. we call it forecast and it's all about and this I will say is sometimes you just need to look at the market and design what is needed to be done. Mm. <laughs> the person who created peanut butter, the story says it was God who showed him how to make peanut butter for the first time because he had such an excess peanut butter and he asked God, what can I do? And God showed okay. him how to make peanut butter. It's it's uh, Sometimes you may have something and an idea that is not it's it it just it's just new and fresh and just move along with it mm -hmm. and so why not or something that you see even that is beyond our time is it, it, it is ahead of our time and you are able to see okay so if that is happening what steps can i do mm -hmm. and so i think it's something i know it's new um it is starting to be taught as uh, forecasting where people say this is what is happening in, in agriculture, or let's say the crop that you're seeing, this is what's happening in the maize, and I think it's going to go down. So ask yourself what needs to be done to improve. Maybe it's this kind of mechanization. Okay, uh, so this kind of mechanization. So you start bringing the machines, people. Mm. Um, so this is me forecasting and seeing what can be done. Also mm. in terms of looking at the diet, um an interesting fact europe is going to stop uh producing milk due to the methane that dairy cows so they are shutting down their dairy cows um yeah, is that an opportunity for that. ghana yeah so is that an opportunity for ghana to start producing milk is it an opportunity for all of us to start producing milk but what is need what is necessary to do that um and when you have the milk right now, will you be able to compete or should you wait until now the milk is over? You know, so such things, you're looking at even what is ahead. Mm -hmm. But this one, as I said, it's something that um, one can, one will, I would, I would say it would be good to do when you have uh, the time and the en energy because it's something that is very involving, especially when you're looking at forecasting. And it needs people uh, mm -hmm. to come together and actually let's let's move this way. But in terms of farming, I'll look at those now. The three things that uh, that I've talked about: the value, the market, and the ecological systems okay. that you have. And I think, okay. yeah. So, um, <laughs> so and it's. I, I mean, uh, farming is awesome. So I. Let me talk about some of the disadvantages. And I think there's one big disadvantage. I don't know how to do it. Uh, I've, I really had a hard time to, 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 to think it through. And this is the human resource and managing people. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I know Abby had asked me. And Very important. I must, <laughs> I must say, I've had so many scary stories. Uh, even around me yeah. and my, my experience I've had good time I've had good luck with getting good people can you hear me I see yeah you went over there by your back now Hello? yeah we can hear you yeah Oh, yeah. And so um, I've, I've had coming, coming in and just treating them as my brothers. Yes, mm -hmm. some may take advantage of you and it's not that it's normally not a good uh, feeling, but I've always treated people as my brother. And yeah. I've realized for, for most that have, have worked that way, there's a level of respect that they have shown me and we are able to work together. So some, so I'm not only just telling them uh, it's time for, for weeding. 
I go with them and and we are we are in the farm with hose and just digging and removing the weeding out as we have a have us as we just chat on. And so I I do that because yes, I do love to be in the soil. I love the soil, <laughs> but I also do that because it's a way of bonding with the person and he sees that we are in this together. So that is, I think, the best I can actually give. Uh, I wouldn't say it's about training. Uh, I wouldn't say it's about uh, skills or anything, but I, I think what's the most important is a relationship that you have with this person. Um, and yeah, I, so I, I know about it's, it, uh -huh. the one who, unlike you, is not really interested in working the soil. I mean, they are doing farming, but they, they don't have their, their hands on thing at heart. What, what strategy would you suggest they use to still create a bond between them and the workers? I, I don't know if I would, it's hard not to be in the soil to, to, to say I'm not saying, I'm not, uh, to say that, yet you're doing farming. I, it's really hard to do <laughs> to say I, I don't want to touch the soil, but, but I want to do farming. It's 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 something like okay, yeah, so how do you do? How do you want to do farming? Well, maybe they're you thinking can, of hiring. People. Yeah, hiring somebody yeah. who will do yeah. everything. Exactly. Um, honestly, I I don't have an answer for that because yes, mm. uh, getting somebody of course who's trustworthy. It either has to come then from somebody who has worked with them, then a referral and mm -hmm. uh, get a reference point. And if not, then be with somebody who actually knows that, uh, who who who's excited. Like, take a friend who loves to go to farm, uh, <laughs> be with him in the farm, <laughs> because relationships do matter. Relationships yeah. do matter. Uh, and it's of course you you may be at luck to get somebody who will be there and he knows this is my work and he's their full time works on it. But if you're always just there, you stand you and the person is working and sometimes the person uh, interest is not really on that farm, then that mm -hmm. can, becomes a problem. But when you're working together, then there's uh, there's a sense of unity. Yeah. As I said, I it's not an answer I have, and I and I have been lucky, and I and I was and one of the strategies I've been doing seems to work, so that's mm -hmm. the best strategy I have right now. Okay. <laughs> um, telephone farming, I, I we always discourage it because of such issues, uh, mostly because of if you're never there and the person never does, then he's not vested he's not really interested in in, in the farm mm -hmm. really it's you who the owner of the farm who is interested in. and so yeah they wouldn't they wouldn't the their the interest wouldn't be there you mm -hmm. and you are calling they don't even feel like you are also a vent vested mm -hmm. in it so they're there for the yeah. salary and the old age of you to come on. Yeah. So I, that's those are now the I will say my that I was what has worked for me. Um I don't know if anyone else has a a different strategy, but yeah, that yeah. that has worked for me for me most of the time. Yeah. Okay. So um Karen and has has put something in the chat. She says just like any other business, I think it's important that one knows what they are getting into before they invest in farming. Otherwise, the workers will take advantage of their lack of interest. That's really true. Because if you don't know, they yeah. might even do and say certain things. And because you are ignorant, oh, you just oh, yeah. agree to it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So at, at least... And, so, and, that, and it's also... Sorry, please go on. Sorry, yeah, and uh, and also um, it's important to know your craft. Mm -hmm. If um if I'm doing maize, let me let me understand the maize. Uh, if mm -hmm. I'm doing tomatoes, I'm let me understand tomatoes. Let me mm -hmm. take time, listen, and talk to people who have done it. Mentorship is very important. 
any business, people don't work, do it alone. Yeah. Also, farming, don't do it alone. Talk to okay. people. Um, have let get into people's minds. Bring people on board. Let them see your farm. Let them give you suggestions. Don't do it alone in a in a cocoon and learn your craft so that even the people who you hire, you know what you're telling them. Like, oh, uh, mm -hmm. they tell you, oh, um, uh, yes, ma'am, uh, but but uh, we need ten bags of fertilizer. But you know, uh, what is what is necessary is six. So mm -hmm. again. <laughs> Or you bought six and they tell you it's not enough, then you know there's something wrong. Yeah, <laughs> there's something mm -hmm. wrong there. Mm -hmm. So those are now the things like understanding now the craft and mm. and especially if you're always away, um, it is good to have that and to to understand your craft. But mm -hmm. yeah, and I think for me, I'll say this: if you get into farming, it's fun. It's uh, it's fulfilling yeah. and one thing never give up okay. <laughs> so let me let me let me let me conclude let me conclude there <laughs> i think okay. i've had my voice too for too long <laughs> let me <laughs> conclude there okay uh, so yeah. thanks a lot for what has been said so far i'll give room for the questions now I'm sure stuff will come up as the questions come in. So thank you. And um, to our audience, if you have any questions, please, now is the time. Francis is ready for you. Any questions? OK, Joyce, please go on. Yes, um, good evening. Not a question per se, but that was a very good presentation. Okay. Um, I'm a farmer myself. Um, yeah. I have about 10 acres of um, coconut mm. and I have about five acres of cassava. Mm. And all the points that he made were right on point. Mm. I think one thing, I don't know, the line was not favorable to me today, so I don't know that he mentioned that, but Okay. One thing I would also want to say is that um, you also have to consider the location of the market. Yeah. Um, yeah. In that, yeah. if your farm is too far, and yeah. um, sometimes it's very difficult to get certain price that you may expect. Okay. Um, yes, ecology. I mean, you have to consider ecology. But for example, I grow um, cassava. And um, I think just before the rainy season, season, cassava in my area was around 12,000 per acre, mm. which if I were, my farm is um, about 15 minutes drive from and so on. If I were to have it maybe about, maybe in my hometown, which is about three hours or four hours from Accra, I may have not been able to make that money. Mm. Sometimes it's very tempting to go far to get the land, not because of ecology, but because of mm. the price of the land. But I think okay. it sometimes yeah. makes sense when you also choose um, a, a place closer to the market. Mm. Yeah, so um, that's a very good point. Mm. And also for um, value addition is very, very important, just as he mentioned. Um, when I started, I started with plantain and cocoa nut. Mm. And at a point, um, I added value to my chips, which um, Abigail is one of our customers, yeah. although it's been some time she bought from <laughs> us. <laughs> I know, I'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, we're expecting you. But the value addition really helped. And as we speak, um, by the grace of God, we are exporting plantain snacks to Canada and to mm. Germany. Imagine mm. if I had just wow. sold my plantain raw like that. So the value mm. addition is something we have to really work on. Just as you said, it's not from the beginning, but you have to mm. have it in mind. Thank mm. you. Thank you so much. I didn't realize that was you. Now, now that you've come, let me also <laughs> remind you of the, the guava that you promised me. She has a oh, yes, yes. guava on her farm. I'm still waiting. <laughs> right. I'll bring it. Thank you. 
<laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. That was a, a really good point. Okay. Any other questions or contributions? Okay. Elon, please go on. Hello, Elon. Hello. Hello, you're muted. Hello. Uh huh. Okay, I can sorry. Hear you now. Yeah. So I, I didn't want to talk until I heard Joyce's voice. Yeah. <laughs> Joyce, <laughs> Joyce makes the best tips in Accra. Thank you. Wow. Oh, I didn't <laughs> oh, know you, you, you buy you some. Around this platform. <laughs> <laughs> where, where is she located? Anyway. Uh, Joyce, please market yourself. We are at East Lebron Hills. We have a pickup point at Airport NCHR. You may follow us on Veron Snacks um, on Instagram, or you can send us a, a message. Maybe you take my number from our girl or yeah. Elon, yeah. and you can we can deliver to your home or office. Thank you. Sure. I'll, se I'll send, send me a flyer. I'm sure you have, and I'll circulate it. Right away. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, hello. Um, yeah. Um, it's been a good time, and I have learned a lot myself. Yeah. Um, yeah. a few things that I want to add um, has got to do with um, one land. Um, one of the okay. one of the key things for us in Ghana is um, land acquisition, yeah. or let me say. Our land tenure system is such that, you know, how you acquired your land for farm is also a major um, point or a very important mm -hmm. one that you must consider. And so um, even taking land from family is a problem. You are better off um, leasing your land and making sure that you have your documentation, your lease agreement intact. Okay. So um, as we want to go into farming, especially in Ghana, let's let's do due diligence on land we want to use. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we would end up going in for land that belongs to someone and your money is taken and you can't find help. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's one important one. Um, the other point on um, value addition, what I would, and it came up eventually that um, the lady that was wearing pigs eventually mm -hmm. went into the restaurant and didn't come back to pigs. So mm -hmm. I was at, at, at the point where um, our speaker was talking, I've forgotten his name, but Francis. Um, Francis, when Francis was talking, it, it was just occurring to me that maybe for some people, they may think that it's too much to maybe cultivate the crops and also go ahead to add value. And of yeah. course, if you're, if, if you're beginning, it's, it's a bit too much to cultivate harvest and add value. And so yeah. what I would say is that, um, that the, the, the agribusiness or agri-food chain is so vast that you can fit yourself in there somewhere. I mean, yeah. some of us may have an eight to five job and so cannot get out onto the outskirts of Accra mm -hmm. to farm, you know, but what can you process? So maybe you're not cultivating crops, but what can you process? I mean, can you do, can you do pepper and, and, and ginger powder mm. and package it nicely and sell? Mm. You know, can you do, can you do, um, can you buy palm nuts and do oil palm or do gummy? Yeah. You know, can you buy, can you start that plantain in and do plantain chips? I mean, there's so much to do in, in the agribusiness space that um, as we listen to people talk to us, we shouldn't get overwhelmed or run away because we think that um, it's too much you know, to do all of that because you want to create value and be profitable quickly. So um, that's the second point I want yeah. to talk about. The third point then would do with um, 
the, the variables that come into play when you begin to farm. And so I think that Francis okay. talked about pumpkins and irrigation. Mm -hmm. So, so what I, from experience, what I have come to see is that you always need to be, you, you need to be in control of the different variables that come to play when you farm. Okay. And so, for example, um, good seeds or certified seeds, um, water. Mm -hmm. So are you depending on rain? When the rains go, what are you going to do? Do you have a very simple irrigation mm -hmm. to, to keep you going? What about your um, inputs in terms of fertilizers? What about your, for example, fun uh, fungicides or pest repellents? You know, more especially for those of us who would want to go organic, we don't want to use pesticides and insecticides. Mm -hmm. So, what are the pest mm -hmm. repellents that you know you're putting in place? Mm -hmm. You know, labor. Do you have control over labor? In Ghana, people come to your farm at seven and twelve; they are done. That is why you mm -hmm. need to put your hands. You need to put your hands in the dirt. I've come to mm -hmm. realize that when your hands is in the dirt and it's two p.m. and you are still working. They are mm -hmm. also with you. <laughs> but if your hands yeah. is not in there and it's 12 p.m., they tell you, ask for them, this is the culture. At 12, they leave. Mm -hmm. You know, so 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 then again, so many variables come to play. And you must be mm -hmm. in control all of, of all of these, you know, variables. If you are not okay. as present on the farm, like we always say, absentee farming is failure. So you can't do, like he said, you can't do farming on the phone. Okay. It won't work. If you do farming on the phone, it won't work. So it's very important that the different variables that come to play, you're in control. Sometimes you even need to try and try and do a soil test because if you're able to do a soil test, you know, you know what, is, what is deficient in your soil and you can rectify it and get very good yield, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, but um, farming is fulfilling. Yeah. I mean, even, even when you don't make profit, but you look back and ask, assess everything you've done, you are fulfilled. Yeah. You, you are excited. I mean, that, yeah, um, yeah you, you were successful at it. It's just yeah. a matter of going back in and, and correcting all the mistakes or wrongs. Yeah. And, then, and, then, and then you bounce back. And the day you do it so well and you are so profitable, trust me, the losses you made over the years, you would be able to recover all of it. So um, just top of mind, yeah. these, are, these are some of the things that you know, are very important. Partnerships, partnerships are key. In Ghana, we don't do well with partnerships, but mm. there are still a few great mm. partners that, that you can find. And, it's good to have partners. Yeah. We, like we say, if you want to go fast, you go alone. But if you want to go far, you go together. Yeah. So let's find, let's find trusted partners and, and work together with them. Yeah. It's the only way that um, we can put resources together and even get to mechanize your thing and the likes. Yeah. yeah. So I think that um, this is what I'll have to say for now. So thank you very much. I've enjoyed it. Thank you. Can I thank bring in? Yeah. yeah. Just sure. to, yes, there's something that Elom has said, and I, I thank you for bringing up those variables um, because that is really part about knowing your craft and understanding what do I really need, what what is when I'm getting into farming. And I like that he broke down those variables uh, um, in terms of the seeds, the water, um, even from the soil types. Mm -hmm. And when you brought in the soil, I I just remember the one of the most um, one of one of the most vital assets that you have as a farm is your soil. Okay, it's the one which will break you or which will make you successful. Mm. If you do not take care of your soil, I'm sorry, <laughs> you won't get what you need. Mm. You need to take care of your soil. 
your soil is alive your soil is active mm. there's a lot that happens in it it holds um it's a house to many ecosystems and I know we can start going on into now how to identify good soil and black. I, li I like how you guys say just black soil, but I will have <laughs> to, I would like to go deeper into that, but that's not for today. <laughs> but your soil is the most important asset okay. that you have. If you're doing especially crop farming, mm -hmm. uh, if you're doing even animal, they still need the feeds, which of again, which will be the farm, uh, the soil, but that you can always give to somebody else to do. But for uh, those who are doing crop farming, the soil is key. Yeah, thank you. Thank you too. Thank you very much. So what I'm hearing is you really need to do a lot of analysis and um, try and predict, you know, how things will turn out and how you're going to resolve them when they turn out like that and that means being very intentional about what you're doing not just going out there and saying okay i've, I've planted let's see what will come there are lots of things that you, you need to think about and take into consideration be very yeah. intentional about yes. your farming great this has been really good our time is up but i'll allow for maybe one last question question or one last contribution if anybody has before we draw the curtain anybody want to ask a question you want to give a contribution okay Anche, please go on um thank you guys for the presentation um francis and for the contributions uh elam and joyce etc um my question is as follows. Um, my overall takeaway from this is this is this is hard. This is difficult. And it's not for the faint of heart, <laughs> right? Faint of heart. So it's something that you, you know, requires a lot more effort, I think, than most people think, and a lot more thought, analysis, patience, mm -hmm. et cetera, perseverance. Um, is there space for people who are interested in say, you know, one or two hours a day trying to do something on a small scale? Um, and 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 then what do you think about? So I'm curious about that sort of category of people. And then I also hear a lot of governments. Um, I'm half Nigerian uh, and a Nigerian citizen. And Nigerian government has done this at various times, telling everybody to go off and farm, or go off and be entrepreneurs, which I generally think is a bad idea because at least entrepreneurship I know quite well. And I've actually been involved in food processing myself. I've I've been involved in a jam uh, manufacturing company. Um, so not growing, but uh, processing and distribution and marketing and all that. But um, I think it's a very bad idea generally because not everybody is cut out to be an entrepreneur. There's a lot of skills and neither a farmer, but I'm curious as to what you think. Is, is farming such that there's just so much opportunity, you know, every unemployed graduate should go out and get a plot and start doing something? Or, you know, will they get a better return on their time by doing something else, you know? So I'm curious, there's two questions. One is just, is there space for the person, the casual farmer who wants to do something for an hour or two? And what's the answer? What crop should, should you plant? What should you do? You guys are the experts, you know? And, and, and then do you think that this sort of directive that young people, unemployed people should go out and farm is, is a good one? Thank you, Anche. Over to you, Francis. And maybe Elon can help if he's still there. All right. Uh, thank you, uh, Onche. I hope I'm spell, um, pronouncing the, the name well. <laughs> and so, if if we are to dedicate one and two or one or two hours in a day for farming, I think you're already into it full. Because <laughs> I, I I there are very few people who actually do that. Um, yes. So one and two hours. Yes, a lot of people can do that. Um, a friend of mine built a hotel out of one and two hours a day, early morning, he'll go to his tomato farm, check it out, uh, uh, make sure everything is okay, then go to his workplace. But the tomato farm is what built a hotel that he owns right now. And he still is in working. <laughs> it's not that he, he needed, he said, his job, 
uh, what he's getting in his salary will be separate from what he's getting from his farm and his farm. He, his end goal was yes to get the tomatoes, which which now the restaurant, the hotel is supposed to, you know, also get its produce from. Not sure if that farm is still there though right now, but he is able to do it until the hotel came up. So yes, one and two hours, it can happen. But again, it has to be intentional. Um, I don't know what it means by casual, but I think um, if I can spend one or two hours after work to go play football, I'm intentional about it. And I want to have fun and play and relieve the stress, but I can be one and two hours and go to the kitchen garden and make sure my coriander or parcel, pa, pa, uh, is it parcel or uh, um, parsley. they are okay. Or my rosemary and my my garlic parsley, yes, uh, my garlic uh, are okay. So that I believe you it can be done. And in fact, one and two hours is is actually more than enough, especially if you're doing uh, a small a small uh, size of land. And for the second okay. uh, question, that's that's a very interesting question. I I think maybe. For the the way it was replaced, I mean, uh, I think every every industry there is entrepreneurship involved, and but yes, I agree with you. This whole idea of everyone should go back to the land and farm, I don't think is a good narrative, and and this is because we need the the value chain of um of farming is is totally big and i, and I know elam also brought, brought it up uh, i know the topic was on farming but elam brought up that there are so many parts of the the value chain in, in in terms of farming that it constitutes of a big big percentage um the tourism industry is literally uh, in the somewhere in the middle of the value chain of farming because when I farm, I produce, and I produce, it goes in the food value chain. It will still go to the farms. It will still go to the schools. All these things, they are there. But we cannot all be farmers, or else there won't be educators. There won't be people who are in the tech industry. But the beauty also about farming, and this is something that we are seeing a trend, is that people have been more artistic into it. In that, just like um the IT sector has been I mean in terms of computers programming people have done crazy things new things very artistic things farming also uh, produce um gives that opportunity so um I I know of a lady who wants to do a therapeutic garden so she wants to plant crops that when somebody is there, they are giving an aroma that it just mm. relaxes them and just they want to feel mm. that's it. I am I'm relaxing. And it's therapeutic. That's farming. Mm. But we are talking yeah. about in, uh, in a therapeutic. Uh, it's you can be creative in 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 how you do your farming. It, it it's not a one size fit all. It's not produce, get my, you know, you can do the farm just for people to come and sit down in your garden <laughs> and they pay you because, yeah. oh yes, I had a lovely time just sitting down yeah. uh, and just meditating in your garden. I felt, felt healthy. It can be as, as creative and crazy as that. That's the beauty about uh, farming. It, it doesn't have to have that one size fit all. And so be entrepreneur, in farming, yes, run through it if you have, if you want to. But if it's not in you, then be an entrepreneur in the in whatever you feel that you're good at. Yeah. So that's uh, that's how I'll answer the question. Mm. That's, uh, that's nice. I mean, I like. I, I don't like know if I've answered your question. The on therapeutic you. farming. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I think I uh, that that's, that gives me hope. Uh, on your first point, that you know for people like myself who might have a casual interest and say, hey, let's try this out sometime. It might be worth the effort to actually spend an hour or two and see, see what mm -hmm. comes out of that. On the second point, I'm reassured as well because 
it, it, I find that just African governments are too quick to cover their own failures and deficiencies in policy and creating a good environment for business and industrialization. <laughs> and they now turn it on people and blame the, blame the young people and say, go off and go off and employ yourselves, right? When you don't have any skills, you don't have any knowledge, you, you know. And also, it's, it's a, the West also tends to, the, the agricultural narrative, agriculture is the answer to everything in Africa, I think has been over pushed in the sense that it, it's very important, but you look at a country like the US, uh, $20 trillion GDP, um, agriculture and um, food processing and everything food related mm -hmm. contributes less than 5% of their GDP. Um, I think growing something like 1% or so. So, you know, US is making 95% of its income mm -hmm. off other mm -hmm. stuff. Like mm -hmm. I, if I had the, the, the money and, I put together yeah. a bunch of young Ghanaians and have them learn everything possible about artificial intelligence, because that's a booming industry. There's a lot of other value-added areas that one could look at. Uh, but so I, so I think it's good. It, it adds some good perspective, your response on, you know, Hello? do what you're good at, do what... Um, Hello? Yeah. Yeah, Francis, we can hear you. Hello? Hello, Francis. Your video is frozen. So... Maybe you can put it off again for now, if you can hear me. Hello. All right, so while we wait for Francis to come back, I'll read a few of the comments here. So Karen says, hats off and more respect to farmers. Comfort is great. I think farming should be passion related or should be passion as related to every other job okay i guess what i'm trying to say is you should be passionate about what you're doing in farming just like you are with any other job all right uh, let's see okay so francis has gone off for now so yes we've learned a lot today i've also learned a lot myself so just by way of recap um before we do any farming we need to do a lot of research you know um, into the kind of farming we want to do the ecology the state of the soil the weather look at the marketing and um, not just the pricing but access to the market um look at adding value to your farm products um and also keep in mind that the values that you have will reflect in your work as a farmer and also partnership don't go at it alone partner with people and learn learn from people what came to mind is you might want to farm but you might not have the business acumen so if if you do your homework well and you find a trustworthy person maybe that that person can help you in the business aspect so partnership is very important and looking at all the variables and trying to predict you know what what can possibly happen in the future and come up with um, interventions to mitigate any adverse um, effects um okay uncle robert says start farming from your backyard yes I, I, it reminds me of what the bible god says in the bible that um if if you do well with little then you are given the opportunity to handle more so if your backyard garden is full of weeds <laughs> then i think it's going to be very difficult for you to handle acres of of land of farm okay so francis is back um, our time is far spent, so I'll let him give his final remarks. Francis, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Okay. Yes, okay. I can. Yeah. So if you can give us your final remarks, then we'll, we'll round off. Well, uh, I think you've done awesome to do that. So, <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you for listening. <laughs> um, I, I think I'll, I I don't know um, Abby can 
share my contact so I can give uh, uh, I can give up my contact so that in case you have more questions or you want to reach out I'm available yeah and sure. yeah um you guys if you if you want to do farming a hundred percent move into it at um I think it's just it's a it's a great journey it's a, it's an awesome journey yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's it. Thank you. And thank you uh, Abby, for this. Thank you too. <laughs> yeah. Thank you too. Yeah, I'm really grateful. And and one last thing, especially in Ghana, make sure that you have all your papers right when you're acquiring land, be it for crop farming or animal farming. <laughs> get do do due diligence, get all the papers right so that you don't have any headache fighting with somebody over the land while you're trying to manage your farm. Okay, so thank you once again, Francis. God bless you so much. This has been good. And thank you all to, for coming. This has been the Abi Imani Reveal Show. This is where we speak. We are real so that we can live the abundant life that Christ has given us. And Jesus is, um, we are, he's, he's referred to as our shepherd, you know. And he definitely has an all knowledge about farming. So if you decide to go into it and you have any struggles, he's also someone you can talk to, to teach you how to do it right. I'm sure he owns the, the land as well, and he will make your crops grow and make your animals also grow. All right. So we'll stay there, close in prayer. Francis, can you please um, pray to close us? Uh, pardon? Sorry? Can you please pray to close us? Okay. Um, then let's pray. Um, Father, thank you for just this day. Thank you for um, all of us who are just here in this space. And we thank you for the success stories. We thank you for even those who have tried and are, and are thinking about it. And we know a lot that can come out of the land and, uh, and a lot that you can teach us about it. And so, Father, we surrender to you. We surrender our thoughts, we surrender our minds, surrender our hearts to you, that we are open to learn also from you. And even as this knowledge that we have gotten, that we will put it in heart and apply it. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. 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 Thank you.